the governors of the 36 states of Nigeria under the umbrella of the Nigerian Governors Forum have said that the rising level of poverty among Nigerians was as a result of the biting effect of insecurity on commercial and agricultural activities. They also alleged that the federal government's inaction had allowed bandits, insurgents and kidnappers to turn the country into a killing field. While reacting to the claim by the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, the 36 governors were responsible for the rising poverty index in the country. The forum did argue that the governors had made tremendous progress in their respective states through relevant projects. Joining us this morning to discuss this and other matters arising is public affairs analyst Ezekiel Nia Ntok. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. It's a privilege and I appreciate it. There's been a back and forth between the governors and the federal government. On the one hand, uh, they're saying that it's the governors, the governors throwing the, bl the blame back. What's your take? Yeah, I, I, I think um, fundamentally in Nigeria, we play the blame game everywhere. But if you come to look at it, um, each side has a point. The federal government has the father role over the whole nation, but the state government have almost more specific roles and then the local government. Now, the state government in the middle has greatly stifled the local government who are supposed to be at the bottom of, you know, the closest to the generality of the people. But before you can contextualize that discussion, you must realize what is the key mandate of government. Unless you get that right, every other thing you are doing is just a waste of time. The Constitution states emphatically in Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B, that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. I couldn't find more emphatic expressions than that. I, I'm not a lawyer. But I'm told that the, the expression or the word or the physiology shall is stronger than must. Nigerians understand this must be done. And when they say that shall is more compulsive, more compelling than must, then it becomes more serious. It says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. The word primary is also an English word. It's foundational, it's fundamental, it's basic. So the most basic, the most fundamental, the most primary objectives of government is the security and welfare of the people. Now, when you understand that context, then you'll see that when we have 133 million Nigerians out of a little over 200 living in abject poverty, multidimensional poverty, then it is a colossal and unacceptable level of failure of government. Now, it's now within that context you have the blame game. The federal government says if states were doing what they were supposed to be, being the custodian and the closest to the people and embarking on projects that will benefit the people and not ego tripping, that we will not have the poverty rate that we are having. Now, the governors are saying, don't tell me that. It's about insecurity, and you control all the forces. We are just, I mean, chief security officers without any army or command or troop. So it is on account of insecurity that there is food insecurity, which has led to this level of poverty because the rural areas are no longer accessible. They have a point there. But I think that Nigerians should not accept any of these segmentations. They should put the blame squarely on the doorsteps of all tiers of government and a, a demand accountability. And, you know, let me end this first phase on this. When we are in a campaign season like we are today, what are these people telling us? What are they bringing out as what they want to do? I happen to be contesting the governorship of my state. I've come up with what we call social governance ideology, which is a bottom-to-top approach of governance and development with the primary objective of bringing the citizens out of poverty. Now, what is the candidate that you are supporting for presidency, 
for governorship primarily. What are they saying about the primary objective of government? I think that I put the blame not on the federal government, not on the state government, not on the local government, but guess what? On Nigerians. Because you get what you sow, you uh, reap what you sow. Mr. Ayatok. That's what I think. Yeah, no, no, let's also go into one other uh, um, uh, issue that we've had in the last uh, 48 hours where the uh, federal government has also blamed state governors for not allowing all the funds meant for local governments to get to them. If you remember, there was the uh, NFIU directive in 2019 um, that governors went to court to challenge. They eventually lost that court case um, even just about a few months ago. So let's get your reaction to that also. Do you agree with Mr. President uh, that state governors have withheld funds meant for local government? And what should I the Nigerian government have been doing instead of complaining? I completely agree with Mr. President. You know, in Nigeria, we do a lot of playing the ostrich. You bury your head in the sand, your whole body is exposed, and you think you're hiding. You're not hiding. We all know what happens to the generality of the local government. Let me not use the same brush and paint everybody. We know that the government, they seize the funds of the local government. They give them money to pay their salaries, wages, and running of government. And they give them a little money to toy around with. And then they control the rest of the money. Now, there was something that Madame Okonjo Iweala was doing, and it was great. And I don't know why the present administration is not doing it. They published what every local government was getting every month. And it is therefore incumbent on all citizens. That office, office of the citizen of, like in my state, Akwaibom State, it is up to you to go to your local government and say, you have collected a hundred million this month. Please tell me, or last month, please tell me what you did with it. When the citizens start to put pressure on the local government administrators, they will be forced for their own peace of mind and safety. To tell the truth, Brose, it is true that 100 million came, but this is what happened. The governor gave me 20 million for me to pay salaries and wages. He gave me another 5 million for me to run the government. That is 25 million. He also gave me another 5 million to run the project. He said that is 30 million. He said that the other 70 million was going into project that he was embarking with the state government or with the local government. Well, I think that I can account for my own 30 million, let the state government account for their own uh, 70 million. Ordinarily, they will not do this unless there is a compelling factor on them to do that. And that compelling factor can only be in their own personal interest because self-preservation is the first law. So it starts with the federal government publishing what every local government has got and then civil societies taking this up and then blowing it up particularly the media as being the fourth estate of the realm and then enlightening the people so that bodies like Serap and the rest of us will be enlightened enough to make sure we put pressure on the people for accountability it's exactly the same reason that when a man like mr wicke comes with this 13 percent derivation reforms Everybody's like, what? I can't be, what? Is it for real? And I think that Nigerians need to start to demand accountability. Look at where we are now, campaign season. What is the candidate that you are supporting saying? Does he believe in accountability, in transparency? He's not going to be an overnight convert or born again. Has he been that sort of person over the years? Or just because he has money, you are following I think that a lot of times, Nigerians, we need to bury our heads in shame, especially the elite, those of us that are enlightened. How are you telling the people, you know that there's a dog and you want that dog to meow? You know this is a cat and you're expecting that cat to bark. It's never going to happen. A man is who he is and who he has been. Any man that does not believe in virtues over the past 20 years in his life and you think that becoming a governor is going to be different the problem is not with the man the problem is with you that is promoting such a person right i think the time 
important for us to rise up as Nigerian elite. I mean, there's so much work that needs to be done. We will continue to talk about it here, holding them accountable as a fourth estate of the realm. Thank you very much, Ezekiel Inia, and talk for your time this morning. What a privilege. Thanks so much. Awesome. Enjoy the rest of your day.